Hey guys and welcome to Petrol Ped. Now today is a sad day but a happy day as well. It's a sad day because today is the day the Hyundai Tucson behind me goes back to Hendy. It's car swap day and it's sad because I've really really fallen for this car. I'll talk more about it when we get on our way but it's an exciting day because I'm going to be picking up my new Hendy car today and I'm not going to give too much away Apart from the fact, this might give you a hint, that car charger I've got on the wall over there is going to be getting some use over the next few months because I'm going full EV. Okay, so we are on our way. It's a beautiful day in West Sussex today. In fact, actually, I think I've creeped across the border into Hampshire already. So I'm on the uh, M27 and I've got the car in highway driver assist mode, which is so clever really. Um, you just stick the cruise on and it's got road sign recognition and it's currently sat at, well, 70 miles an hour uh, top, but I've, it's got adaptive cruise, so this car's in front of me, so it will adjust to their kind of speed, the normal kind of stuff. You know. But what was the plan? So I'm on my way down to Pool. Uh, to a handy dealership in Pool. I shan't say which brand yet. Uh, to drop off the Tucson and pick up my Average speed new. Check zone ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, ways uh, pick up my new uh, Hendy Ambassadors car. But I wanted to just talk a little bit about uh, the Tucson because um, I've really, really enjoyed having the Tucson. And, and what I want to make sure everybody realises is, it, you know, although I am a, a Hendy brand ambassador, part of the deal was when I agreed, see, there we go, we've just gone past a 50 mile an hour limit and zone. the cruise has automatically changed to 50. Love that. Um, so part of the deal for me, part of my agreement was that I was always going to be free to say whatever I wanted to about the car. If I liked it, I'd say I liked it. If I didn't, I'd say I wouldn't. So I'm not just saying that this is a great car because it's uh, part of a deal I've got with Hendy. It's just genuinely a really, really good car. Hopefully by now you've seen my review I put out on the channel just a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, the things I really like, it's not a brand that I would have been naturally drawn to as my own car, although I've driven uh, the i30N hatch and Fastback in the past and love both of them, they're brilliant, brilliant things. Um, this particular um, car probably wouldn't have been one on my radar, but then that's a bit like the Kia Sorento I had. It, it was one of these cars and uh, you, know, you get hold of it and you think, okay, let's just, let's just, um, Let's just look at the car based on its merits, not on any preconceived ideas about what the brand should be or what the car should be. And when you do that with a car, for me actually as a car reviewer, it's taught me quite a few really, really important lessons. You ignore the badge and you just, you just look at the car for its merits. Styling wise on the outside, I think this car is absolutely on the money, but inside for the money, you know, this, this is the, the top spec exclusive model. So it's 38,000 pounds. So for me, I know for some that is a lot of money. It's a new car price uh, and I know, you know, it's still a lot of money. But actually for the spec that you get, you get a lot of a lot of car for the money. You know, I drove back from Duxford on <clears throat> Monday this week after a full day of filming. It was 30 degrees. It was super hot. And I got in the car and I put the aircon on and I put my chilled and vented seats on and I connected my car to Apple CarPlay and I sat in this highway uh, driver assist mode all the way home and it was so relaxing and I just thought this is a brilliant car and so I, we really enjoyed it and Mrs. Petroped has loved it as well so it's really sad to see it go. The big question is what comes next? So I've done a plug-in hybrid, I've done a self-charging hybrid which lots of people got the real hump about me calling it a self-charging hybrid oh it's not self-charging it's petrol charging well of course it is but that's a commonly used industry term and I just use the term self-charging hybrid to differentiate from a plug-in hybrid because they are very very different things so I've, I've done plug-in hybrid I've done self-charging hybrid and um, so I thought it would be a good idea to go full EV the big challenge we've had, as I'm sure many of you know, and it's a subject I've talked about on the channel before, is currently in the UK, and actually I don't think it's exclusive to the UK, we have massive problems with supply. Uh, supply and demand have just gone absolutely nuts. There's lots of reasons why supply is difficult. There's the whole issues around COVID, there's issues around Brexit, 
Um, but what it basically means is the car industry currently doesn't have enough stock. So we were really challenged in selecting what my next car would be. And I've gone for something that's full EV because I was very keen to now live with a full EV for uh, a couple of months. I've only ever had an EV for a week. Um, sometimes that's been very painful, sometimes it's not been. So I really wanna kinda just live with a full EV, but I also wanted to live with a full EV that was just that little bit different and not the normal things that people would think about. So let's head on down to Poole. When we get to the dealership, I shall tell you more. God, these average speed check zones are really dull. <laughs> this one's really long as well, 50 miles an hour for a long time. I mean, you can drive along in one of these with your hands off the steering wheel. And actually this car, um, some cars when you're in this kind of autonomous driving level two mode, you take your hands off the steering wheel for, for more than a couple of seconds and it starts to have a bit of a moan at you. This one, you could literally, I think it's, a, it's quite a long time before the car says, oh, you put your hands back on the steering wheel. Anyway. Um, I thought I'd just look back at the history of the car in terms of miles done and average uh, MPG and so on. So um, in the time I've had the car, three and a half thousand miles, uh, <laughs> nearly 90 hours sat in this driver's seat. So I think I'm in a good position to give you a feel for the car. But in that time and in that uh, mileage, I've averaged 43.6 miles to the gallon over a whole mix of different types of driving. And that was the number that I kind of quoted in my review the kind of low, mid to low 40s um, is, the, is, a, is a number. And a few people said, oh, that's not that good. But interestingly, if I look at the trip since I last refueled, which I did in Duxford, so I've done 205 miles since Monday, um, I've actually averaged 51.7 because those miles were on a lot of road, roads like this, sort of, you know, just cruising at 60, 70 miles an hour on a dual carriageway. And that, that's much, much more like it. Because a few people had commented that, that hybrids come up with a price premium and, and you know, you, why don't you just buy a diesel and get much better fuel economy? And there's some truth in that. But what I would say is what I didn't mention in the review and what you need to bear in mind with these hybrids, and I guess it's the same with electrics as well, actually, is the other costs of running a car can be reduced. So you get a better, in the UK, we call it benefit in kind, but a better incentive to have one of these as your company car than you would do a full piston car. Um, and then you've also got things like maybe congestion charge or low emission zone driving, that kind of thing. So it is a, a broader picture, but I think on the whole, I think actually sort of mid to high 40s with one of these uh, is realistic. And as I've said on this journey, since I last refueled, I'm in the 50s, uh, which for a little 1.6 petrol engine with a hybrid, I think is really, really good. Anyway, hopefully this average speed check zone will be over soon because it's so Safely arrived in sunny pool. Now, sadly, the Tucson will be returning back to Hendy Hyundai behind me of pool. And it is a sad day because I've really enjoyed my couple of months with this car. It's, it's really got under my skin. I didn't expect to enjoy it nearly as much as I have done. I think it's a great looking car um, from the outside, but when you live with this car, you really appreciate just how rounded and how good it is at all the things you want from an everyday car. It's got lots of space, it's comfortable, it's economic, it looks good. Uh, it's a good price, it's got a good aftercare and warranty and so on. You know, you can't really want much more than that for a car. But when I, when I started working with Hendy, I knew that every now and again, you know, every couple of months I'd have to say goodbye to a, an old car and say good, uh, hello to a new car. And what I want to do with the next car is just explore the world of EVs. I've driven plenty of EVs on the channel before. Um, clearly there's the whole living with conversation that I want to explore, you know, the public charging infrastructure, longer journeys. I've got my Zappi at home, so local driving should be really easy. Um, but one of the most common comments I get whenever I get an electric car is about price and how expensive they are. 
Um, and to be fair, I have had some expensive electric cars on the channel from the e-tron GT and Porsche Taycan, uh, Audi e-trons, Jaguar I-Paces. They're all well north of £60,000. In fact, the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron GT are well north of £100,000. So with this electric car, I wanted to explore what is it like with a budget electric car? What if you didn't have 60 grand to spend on an electric car, but still wanted to get into that, that you know, environmentally friendly, economic driving? Well, the car that we've chosen for my next Hendy car does exactly that because it's an EV that's gonna set you back less than 30,000 pounds. And it's parked just behind you. I think you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. Let's see how this one goes, shall we? Yep, <laughs> welcome to MG of Pool. Another brand that Hendy have in their group and one that maybe will have surprised you in terms of choice. I need to get a couple of things out there, I guess. First of all, probably more for my British audience and that is the whole MG thing. I'm sure many of you know that the brand was bought a number of years ago now and has been repurposed. There's not a great deal of similarity or, or link between the modern day MG badge and the old MG sports cars um, of the kind of 70s and so on. Um, I guess the big link is the logo. I'm actually gonna put that to one side and not worry about it too much, but this, this is my new daily. And yes, it does have an MG badge on it. This is the ZS. EV, a fully electric car. Um, this has a 45 kilowatt hour battery and a range of between 150 to 170 miles. We will put that one to the test in my two months of ownership. The charge port's quite cool, it's in here. The charge port is just there. It does rapid charging, so it's got a CCS charger. It will do up to 100 kilowatt charging apparently, again, will put that to the test, although my Zappi charger at home is just a seven kilowatt charger. But the reason I was interested and, and chose this car is because I think it's quite a challenging car for some people. Um, first of all, we've done the MG thing, um, but it's not a brand that you would necessarily associate with EV. However, it's a bit like the Kia and the Hyundai that I've had already is Actually, if you look at where this car is made, how it's made, who it's made by, um, there's a lot of really, really advanced electronic and electrical car tech in the company. And it uses a lot of components from some quite well-known brands that you will know in order to keep that price point down. Because this is the really interesting thing for me about this car. This is the exclusive spec. So the top spec that they do in this particular model and this car retails at just over 28,000 pounds. There are only five color choices, so there are some, some spec options you can choose in terms of color choices that might vary that price a little bit, but in the region of 28,000 pounds on the forecourt, that is your brand new all electric car. That's with the current government subsidy, by the way. So I just think it's quite interesting to explore if you're gonna spend less than 30 grand on an electric car, what's it gonna be like? What's the quality gonna be like? What's the drive gonna be like? What's the range going to be like? What's the living with experience going to be like? Talking about living with, we've got some important characters on the channel, the pups, and I need to think about my bike. So let's have a look around the back and see what the luggage space is like. So it's that compact SUV format. And boot wise, it's quite quite a clever boot. It's actually got a two level floor, so you can, at the moment the boot floor is as low as it goes, but you've got these two different heights. So you could have, you could raise the floor and have like a secondary floor underneath. Uh, but there seems to be plenty of space in here. Uh, looks like a 60-40 rear seat drop, uh, removable parcel shelf. So I reckon, I reckon we can get lots of stuff in there. I think the pups are gonna be happy. Let me just jump into the uh, driver's seat and talk about the inside of the car and some of the trim levels because it's a pretty well spec car this. All we need to do is keep thinking. 28,000 pounds. Not 60, not 80, 28. Now then, this ZS comes in two trim levels. It's got the, you've got the Excite and then you've got the Exclusive, which we're in. Now, even the Excite, the base trim, I think it's about 1,500 quid cheaper. 
It's still got quite a lot of kit on it. It's got an eight inch uh, touchscreen display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Happy days already. Um, it's got um, auto headlights, rear parking centers, adjustable door mirrors, and those types of things. If you go for the Excite, uh, sorry, the exclusive spec, however, a couple of things that you get which are, for me, really important. First of all, you get the pan roof, um, you get roof rails, you get the uh, leather seats, um, and then you also get um, heated front seats, um, you get a rear parking camera, um, and the front driver seat is also electric as well. So it's quite a lot of extra bits of kit on there. So it, for 28 grand, there's a lot of kit in this car and I'm going to be really interested to see just, you know, how well it works. My initial impressions, having honestly, first time I've ever sat in it, um, is actually, <laughs> it's a really nice looking cabin. It's got an okay range of materials. It's got this kind of, that's quite a nice material around here. I don't want to do too much in this quick walk round. Um, I'll save most of that for my full time review. You've got a couple of drinks bottles there, a little storage bin down here storage bins in the doors. Um, it looks like a, a really useful place. A little rotational gear selector. Uh, you've got a number of different um, drive modes, apparently. Um, there's three different drive modes. I'll explore those in my review. Uh, let me just start the car. Clearly, that's it. It's on. Um, quite a nice, um, sort of more traditional looking display. It's not a TFT screen completely. There are two analog dials the one on the right hand side is all of my electric information, my power and so on with a, uh, a charge indicator at the bottom. Um, and then I've got my normal odometer on the left hand side, a little small screen in the middle with various functions. Altogether, do you know what? This feels pretty good. Um, the steering wheel feels nice. Um, steering wheels feel and position. Um, I've got up and down adjustment, no reach adjustment, but actually, that's not too much of an issue. So yes, so this is my new daily. Now I am busting to hear what you guys have to say about this. As I said, when I, when I, when I started working with Hendy and we started talking about these ambassador cars that I would get every couple of months, um, you know, for sure on that list were cars that you would maybe guess, high performance cars, big, you know, SUVs, those types of things. But we always wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, and hopefully you found that with the first couple of cars I've had there, what I've called more normal cars. There are plenty of YouTube channels out there that are swapping out supercars like they're going out of fashion without telling you actually how they're being financed or paid for. You know, I want to do cars that normal people can buy um, and that normal people might be interested in. You know, you might be interested in taking the jump into EV, but you didn't want to spend a fortune. Um, and actually maybe this is a way of of doing that. One of the things I haven't mentioned, by the way, is all MGs come with a seven year warranty um, and, you know, some some really good peace of mind. Uh, I, the idea is this has got a five star end cap crash testing, which again is something really, really important. Um, you know, I've got uh, a whole range of sort of safety features to keep me safe while I'm driving. So, um, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to this one. It, as I said, it's a bit left field. I'm sure some people will be going, uh, what a rubbish car. I actually don't agree. I think that we need to, I said this on the way down, we need to open our eyes to different brands. I, I'm not a big fan of the reuse of the MG badge and the MG name, but it's been done and I can't do anything about that. So I don't look at that MG badge and think about an MGB Roadster or anything. I just think, okay, fair enough, new brand, new range of cars. They've got some really cool tech apparently. They've got some quite interesting cars on the roadmap. This is due a facelift in the next sort of six to nine months. Uh, the current petrol car has that facelift. It looks really quite good. So, you know, let's let's see how we get on. Anyway, please let me know what you think in the comments. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. Um, I'm not going to do any driving now. I'm going to get in it, drive home and see how I get on. Um, and I will update you as soon as I can um, with a video on this in terms of my, I feel like my first review and driving impressions. But for now, I'll see you on the next film guys. You take care. Drive safe. <laughs>